All right, for more, we're joined now by Dr. Edward Chang, who is the chair of neurosurgery at UCSF. Dr. Chang, uh, great to have you on here. This is such a remarkable breakthrough, and I'm excited to, to hear from you what this is all about. In, in essence, you came up with a way to, to allow a person who is paralyzed, who, who can't otherwise speak, to, to be able to communicate by, by tapping into the, the signals from, from a certain part of their brain. Explain what it is that you've achieved. Sure, uh, happy to do that. Um, what we have done is that we demonstrated that it's possible to decode from brain activity uh, full words from the brain of a patient who's been paralyzed and suffered a stroke over 15 years ago and allowed him to restore um, a small uh, set of words and a uh, small vocabulary to help restore communication. So this involves a, a, a device, an electrode that's implanted over a, a certain part of, of the patient's brain that can then read those brain signals. And then, and, and then what happens with, with those signals? How is that put into words? Yeah, sure. Um, so all of us have this part of the brain that uh, controls the muscles of the vocal tract. Every time we speak, the lips, jaw, tongue, larynx are controlled by this one part of the brain called the sensory motor cortex. And in some people who are paralyzed, especially in parts of the brain like the brainstem, those signals can't get out to the muscles of the body or to the face. And in this particular situation to speak. And so we developed a, a device technology that can record from the surface of the brain, directly from the surface, from many spots, in particular 128 channels, uh, or 128 particular spots over that part of the brain and try to read out those signals from that part of the brain um, to try to decode what someone is trying to say, even though they were paralyzed. It's really, really remarkable. I mean, giving, giving voice to, to someone who does not have a voice, um, it's, it's a remarkable achievement. To, to take me back a step and, and talk about how, how we got here. This didn't just happen overnight, obviously. This is something you've been researching and working on for, for more than a decade, I understand. And then you created a, a clinical trial and, and, and you really tried to, tried to focus on being able to, to translate someone's brain activity into words. Why, why was this something that was important for you to work on? Sure. Well, um, first of all, thank you. And there has been a lot of previous work on this from our group and many of our close colleagues and around the world. Um, there have been great strides in the field that we call brain computer interfaces, where um, related work has been done to restore uh, movements like a cursor control, uh, even a robotic arm. Some of our close colleagues have made great progress in um, decoding brain activity to help restore typing, you know, uh, spelling out things letter by letter. Our particular uh, project really builds upon a lot of the successes of this previous work from our colleagues and looks precisely at the question of speech. Um, why we think speech is really special is because we think in terms of words, um, you know, speech is so uh, essential and core to who we are as humans. And um, it was a tall order to think about how you would restore that. That's why we started with a small vocabulary of 50 words in this project. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of things went into this and uh, it leveraged you know, a, a decade's worth of neuroscience research and discovery about how this particular part of the brain controls the parts of the vocal tract to give rise to all of the consonants and vowels in uh, the English language. And was, once we had that knowledge, um, we knew that um, there was a chance that this might work in someone who was paralyzed. I know that the patient you worked with uh, was actually able to respond to a question that you put up on a screen. Um, I, I imagine that moment must have been uh, something, something for you. Uh, you know, what, 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 were, what was going through your mind in, in that moment when, when, you, when you saw that happen and you saw that patient respond to an actual question? Well, of course, that's a really special. That was a special moment. But the reality is that every time that that happens, it's not just the first time, um, the second time, third time, and so on. It was, in fact, um, as the algorithm approved, improved, you know, it, it essentially had to learn how the brain activity is mapped to words. And it's not something that is, um, it's not even good at first. It takes a lot of time to basically train that algorithm to be able to do that. And so um, once we started seeing that it was not just like one time 
or two, but could happen in succession, uh, that was when we really got excited because it needs to be reliable in the road for this to, to really help folks. And so um, this was just the first start. We are just getting started in this area. This is the first time um, we've ever done this. And um, you know we're learning a lot and uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, obviously, you, you deal with patients, so many of them who, who've been through accidents or suffered strokes and, and have lost the ability to speak here. Would you, what do you see as the, 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 the implications of this, uh, this research here and these findings? Um, how, how much of a difference do you think this can make for, for your patients, for others around the world? Alex, I think the main thing is that um, for people who are paralyzed in uh, certain kinds of medical conditions, um, there's hope. Um, the technology, I think, is around the corner. Um, it is coming. Um, great progress is being made from our group and a lot of our colleagues around the world in, in this particular field. And so um, we're really excited to think about, you know, within this next decade, devices that can help restore some of this function for the people who need it the most. All right, well, congratulations once again uh, on what you've achieved here. Appreciate you taking some time to, to talk about your work. Thank you. Dr. Edward Chang, Chair of Neurosurgery at UCSF. Take care. Thank you.